Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we have the latest from the live radar from the latest UKV have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as we can see through much of the Christmas period now and it is looking really quite cold indeed with the temperature inversion taking place with these easterly winds coming in off the near continent so temperatures at the upper air level are going to be very mild over the next four or five days but at the surface it is going to be much much colder temperatures below average pretty much every everywhere as we see the surface temperatures really cooling down a pretty typical winter pattern under big higher pressure and that's exactly what we're going to be seeing but as we progress to the end of the year we are going to see a more wintry and even colder pattern starting to develop or that's at least what the majority of the longer range charts are now showing yes we've had a bit of wobbling over the past few days the models initially pushing back the colder spell into 2026 some runs even completely cancelling it but we have seen a shift overnight last night within sort of the last 24 hours towards the colder solution. The GFS is showing the coldest run it's shown in a number of days, probably going back to sort of the end of last week. And we are seeing pretty much all of its ensembles on board with at least a pretty potent colder spell, uh, at least for a few days there to end 2025 and start 2026. Some are even showing a good sort of week or two prolonged colder spell as well. ECMF has been pretty sceptical as well over the past few days, especially its ensembles. It's not 100% on board yet, but it has shifted towards that colder solution as well. So if you had been worried over the past few days that all the hype we've had over the last couple of weeks, all the long range charts have all been showing cold potential for it to you know, actually not come to fruition. That been the worry over the past few days. Those sort of concerns are looking like they have reversed a little bit with it now looking more and more likely. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. Now, if you start on the live radar, you can see the high pressure is building in at the moment, or it's built in many areas, and you can see it is dry, but pretty cold. You can feel it out there if you go out today. It is chilly. It looks really nice. It looks really pleasant. Lots of sunshine, but that easterly wind, especially if you are in parts of England, East England, Southern England, it really is quite biting. And yes, the thermometer temperatures are five or six degrees today, but it feels more like one or two. Tomorrow, for Christmas Day itself, the thermometer temperatures will probably be three to five degrees, so a couple of degrees colder, and it's going to feel potentially below freezing. In some areas, especially further westwards, away from that breeze, the thermometer temperature, uh, temperature might be even lower. If you do look at the actual temperatures this afternoon, you can see many areas are blue, indicating mid-single digits. And you can see further westwards, especially over higher ground, you see the higher ground really sort of jumping out here, the moors across the southwest, you can see as we head into Wales, the Peak District, Lake District, up towards Scotland, some of these areas are not getting much above freezing, so really quite bitterly cold already starting to develop in those higher areas and you can see much of europe is starting to cool down you can see that air getting drawn in yes we're not going to tap into this bitterly cold air in the next few days but into the end of the year around probably this time next week that's when we start to look at some of that really cold air arriving now if you look at the latest ukv if we look at the precipitation we'll be able to see there's really not much going on it's turning even drier during the next sort of 24 hours a few odd showers maybe some snow flurries could be around into christmas day but don't expect anything too crazy and you see for most there's actually clear skies stunning conditions on christmas day just feeling really quite cold into boxing day it's a similar story maybe a bit more trap cloud further southwards but still a really sunny and beautiful but cold day into the weekend, we are going to see a slight shift in the wind direction. The wind's going to come more enough the northeast with a bit of milder air coming around the high. So it will mean temperatures might jump up a couple of degrees. But again, we're not expecting anything above average, still around average or below average, kind of mid single digits, maybe seven or eight in the best spots. And then slowly into next week, you see a bit more cloud developing. And that's because the high pressure is shifting its position and it allows a bit more moisture to get picked up around the northeast. And you can start to see few showers coming in off the North Sea and this is because we start to see northeasterly winds 
arriving. If we look at the mean sea level pressure, you can see right now we've got an easterly wind. As we progress into the weekend, that high pressure starts to shift westwards and then eventually it de does develop more into a north to northeasterly come early next week. And this is the point at which we could start to draw in bitterly cold air from the northeast. You can see the upper air temperatures, that cold air is not too far away. We're not tapping into it at this stage. It's still actually incredibly mild. But as I said, we are seeing a temperature inversion at the surface. If you do look at the temperatures this afternoon, most areas struggling around three to six degrees, feeling colder than that. Overnight tonight, not too many areas will see frosts. We've got a bit of cloud holding those temperatures up, but most areas will be around two to four degrees, maybe close to freezing further westwards and further north. You see where those lighter blues are. It's that wind and a bit of cloud holding those temperatures up. As we progress into Christmas Day itself, yes, there could be a little bit of a frost in quite a few spots, one or two degrees by sort of sunrise and then to the afternoon. Look at that really quite cold, kind of two to five degrees in most spots. Some areas are not getting much above freezing. Into Boxing Day, a much harsher frost overnight as that inversion really starts to take hold. Most areas getting close to freezing or below freezing and into the afternoon of Friday of Boxing Day. Again, really struggling around the low single digits in many areas. The best spots might get towards five, six or seven degrees. Into the Saturday the 27th, again, another frost to wake up to. Again, it's not everywhere, but a lot of areas will have the risk of some ice and frost. And then again, into the afternoon, as I said, temperatures might lift up slightly with that change in wind direction, six or seven degrees more likely. Into Sunday, potentially a frost once again, but more refined to northern and western areas with, again, a bit of cloud moving in further southwards. And again, into the afternoon, six or seven degrees. And then into Monday, you can see, we see that cloud disappearing away, more of a northeast is starting to get drawn in and more areas are below freezing so yes the upper air temperatures are not remarkable yes we aren't going to see much precipitation at all it's actually going to be very sunny but you can see the thermometer temperatures it is going to be cold over the coming days not frosts every night or everywhere but many areas will have quite a few consecutive frosts coming up and it is going to feel really quite chilly there over the coming days uh, again the wind chill on top of this especially for southern and eastern areas is going to be a good few degrees below these thermometer temperatures so if you are out on a christmas walk or doing anything out and about over the coming days to make sure to wrap up warm as it is going to feel really quite cold but of course a lot of people will be clicking on this video to see what is the latest update as we head towards the end of the year and start of 2026 where we are fairly confident that something very cold could start to arrive the high pressure is in control over the coming days, kind of milling around over the top of us, a dry, cold, but settled pattern. But you can see it's the last couple of days of December. This is the point at which the GFF, uh, the East UKV got to, sorry, where normally winds are starting to move in, the north northeasterly winds. And you can see from the latest GFS, they start to really pummel us in about six or seven days' time with a proper northeasterly wind. And you can see the high pressure holds on, it doesn't topple, and it allows this draw in off Scandinavia and you can see this big wedge of very cold air we're tapping into at the moment there's not that much cold air to our northeast and that's why it's not terribly cold but this time next week that cold air will be established across northern and eastern Europe and this is where we tap into it now here the high pressure does collapse ever so slightly and we'll see at the end of the video from the ensembles that the GFS is very severe. It's one of the most severe runs in terms of air masses. You see the minus 10 isotherm moves in. But because the high doesn't hold on too long, it does collapse into the early portion of January. So yes, it's a really quite potent, severe cold for about three, four, five days. Really, really quite potent with the minus 10 isotherm coming in. That is, uh, yeah, again, not a completely absent event, but... It is one that doesn't happen every year, I must say. Uh, it does dissipate quite quickly into early January. And we'll see the ensembles that that is one of the milder runs longer term. And does break down the cold much faster. But nonetheless, very potent and would produce a lot of snow with that northeasterly low pressure and troughs around us. Beyond that, the high pressure does topple and it kind of goes back to what we've got right now. High pressure over the top of us, dry and cold. And then right towards the end of the run, we start to see the high pressure again ridging westwards and trying to unlock another northerly wind. So I wouldn't be surprised if the high pressure has another go as we head towards the middle of the month. So yes, GFS perhaps not lasting as long as some other runs have been. 
we recently uh, and not as long as some of the ensembles are showing but my gosh it is a potent run and it would produce uh, a number of days of very very cold conditions and snowy conditions uh, as well if we zoom in and have a look at some of the snow depths again i wouldn't take these too literally but you can see across eastern england many areas seeing a dumping of snow east anglia looking at 10 plus centimeters as with those northeasterly winds in just seven or eight days time so yes really quite cold indeed now the gm has been fairly skeptical over the past few days it's been fairly skeptical over the past couple of weeks in general really only coming on board with the colder spell at times last week but nothing too crazy you can see once again it does show a northerly wind coming in but similar to some of the recent runs it topples the height very quickly. So yes, slightly colder air comes in for a time, but we see absolutely nothing. Yes, it has another go at day 10. There's another ridge up towards Greenland, and it could unlock something much colder there into the early portion of January. But once again, the GM is a little bit all over the place, really. Not showing that very cold pattern at all. And yeah, just showing more of a flat Atlantic pattern. If it showed the high amplifying and perhaps toppling over the top of us then i probably believe it or believe it as a, a sort of a, a, a perspective pattern but the fact that it goes flat westerly when the gfs has got bitterly cold northeasterlies it just tells me that the gm is sort of picking up on something here that the other runs are not seeing uh, and given the looks of the ensembles i would say i wouldn't be on the side of the gm just because so much of the model output is showing high pressure towards Greenland, high pressure into the North Atlantic. Again, doesn't always mean north or northeasterly winds, but the fact that the GM's not showing that at all means it is really quite left field compared to the recent runs. Even the ECM and the F, which is a bit more skeptical than the GFS, not as full blown northeasterly as the GFS, it even shows the big high pressure to our north. You can see it does have a real go at those northerly winds. It's more under the higher pressure, which means more of that cold air stays to our east. But you can see right towards the end of the run, it kind of has round two, and we do see that bitterly cold air moving in, and it does end very cold here. So, really quite interesting, both the GFS and the uh, ECMWF get to very cold patterns, do it in slightly different ways, and the ECMWF kind of does it on second attempt, just so the GFS is kind of breaking it down. But regardless, they both show a successful cold outbreak into the new year. Uh, and again, given the looks of the ensembles, more and more of those are agreeing as that as the eventual outcome. Again, the finer detail, the exact date, basically cold air spreads through, or exact dates and positioning of the low pressure, timings, things like that. And of course, the exact air masses, all sort of finer details that we'll kind of work out over the coming days. But it's this larger synoptic picture that the models were sh so sure on last week. And then they wobbled through the weekend and the start of this week. And it looks like they're perhaps gaining confidence or at least more confidence once again. As we'll see from the ensembles now, the GFS ensembles are pretty much fully on board. You see, a little bit milder upper air temperatures over the coming days as expected the high pressure building in and then you see a big drop around the 29th the 30th of december so in about exactly a week's time and then you can see it is cold if not very cold the gfs op is one of the coldest runs here initially but then you can see longer range is one of the milder runs most are kind of hovering around that minus five line for the foreseeable future so a prolonged and increasingly wintry pattern with more precipitation spikes appearing here from the gfs so yeah no milder runs here no gms with a flat westerly within the gfs ensemble output now we have seen ensemble outputs like this and it has reverted it has done a u-turn but normally when we see such confidence within the gfs output at this time frame for this sort of pattern um, then i'm fairly confident that it's not going to be completely wrong yes some of the timing some of the severities might be a little bit wrong uh, you know a couple of days out in timings maybe a couple of degrees out in the temperatures uh, but to think it could be above average and westerly given the output from the gfs here yes that is uh, yeah that would be a huge model flop if i'm being completely honest so gfs a lot of confidence today or at least in the latest six o'clock run for that very cold pattern. If we actually go back to the midnight run, you can see it is a similar confidence, maybe even more confidence, or in terms of deeper cold there around day 10. So yeah, really, really interesting from the GFS, fully on board with this colder spell, 
uh, other other runs still a little bit skeptical as you can see from the ECMWF here again a big drop around the 29th to 30th so agreement between the GEM uh, sorry between the GFS and the ECMWF there but then around the new year a little bit more wobbling so like the o operational ECMWF perhaps a little bit of a high pressure topple allowing slightly milder air masses to build in it looks like some runs are showing that not all but some runs are showing that and then you can see a bit of a tail off longer term with still most are below average so i'd still definitely go on the side of it being cold if not very cold from both of the gfs and the ecmwf just a few different options appearing here from the ecmwf so yes compared to yesterday's runs we have seen a substantial shift closer towards those colder solutions is it a done deal no but i'm more confident today definitely yes uh, again given the fact that most runs are bringing this colder air in in around six or seven days time or beginning beginning to bring in that northeasterly wind in six or seven days time we're pretty much at the point now where uh, point of no return where if in the next day or two unless we see some huge shifts then it is looking very likely that we are going to see this northerly arriving again the timings severity details again will be ironed out in the next sort of three or four days or so but the overall synopsic pattern we'd have to see something you know drastic occur in the next couple of updates to really change what we are now sort of pinpointing as uh, for the end of the year and start of January. So looking like a really interesting end of the year. Do enjoy the Christmas period. Yes, it's going to be very cold, but it is going to be dry and sunny because we could be seeing something a little bit more wintry to end the year and start 2026. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed subscribing new and I'll see you again for another video soon.